Hello lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this video, we shall be discussing the detailed analysis of A Reach of Tears by Kwabna Iyi Aqua. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. Kwabna Iyi Aqua is a Ghanaian poet and lawyer born in Winneba in the central region of Ghana and educated in the University of Ghana Lagan and the Ghana Law School. He is a legal and investment consultant. He contributes to Ghana's public life in organizations such as the Copyright Board, the W.E.B. Du Bois Center for Pan-African Culture and the Ghana Book Development Council. His publications include the following. The Man Who Died, published in 1984, Music for a Dream Dance, published in 1989. Rivers Must Flow, and No Time for a Masterpiece, published in 1995. He served as a member of the National Media Commission and the Ghana Book Development Council, and chairman of the Copyright Board and the W.E.B. Du Bois Center for Pan-African Culture, among others. He was a past president of Ghana Association of Writers, Kwabna Ei Aqua has established himself as a definitive poetic voice and his works are studied in schools and universities around the world. Recognition for his work include the Valko Fan Literary Award, the Commonwealth Poetry Prize for Africa, the Norma Prize, and the Ghana Book Award. So, let's delve into the poem. Before we start this lesson, let me ask you this simple question. Why are funerals a big deal in the African society? Yes, why are funerals a big deal in the African society? In the African society, we celebrate funerals for various reasons, some of which include the following. 1. They help us to acknowledge that someone we love has died. 2. Funerals allow us to say our final goodbye to the departed souls. 3. Funerals offer continuity and hope for the living. 4. Funerals provide a support system for us, friends, family members, and the community at large. 5. Funerals allow us to reflect on the meaning of life and death. So, after discussing why funerals are such a big deal in the African society, let's now delve into the poem. Funerals in Africa are not only occasions to mourn, they are also an opportunity to celebrate the life of the dearly departed. In recent times, Ghanaian funerals or funerals in the African society are hardly any sober, low-key or private affair. Ghanaian funerals are a social event massively attended by a large number of mourners. As some would say, the more the better. Once a lot of people attend a funeral, it is assumed that the deceased or the person who has passed away is very influential, friendly and very charitable or generous or the person is very sociable. Most Africans may spend as much money on funerals as they will spend on weddings, sometimes even more, depending on the stature of the person. So you see, funerals are such a big deal in the African society. Let's take our first reading of the poem. Your funeral was so quiet and small, almost too small it is said for a man of your stature. You must have preferred it that way, having buried so many yourself. And knowing as you did, how private grief must be, how loss remains at the end personal, we would have sent flowers, but seeing how they had fallen carelessly into disrepute and not wanting to offend, we did not. Instead, from the garden of memory, suddenly blooming as with first rains, we plucked with care, a rose here, an ivy there, ferns, lilies, chrysanthemums, and drop by tearful drop we wove, a reach from our personal loss. We wear it around our hearts privately, 
It will outlast any tombstone, and you would have preferred it that way. At this poem, A Reach of Tears, is a tribute to Osofopon S.B. Asamoa to celebrate his life and the message he leaves for the world even at the point of death. This was a great and influential man who wanted his own funeral to be as simple as possible, which defies the thought of a typical African funeral, especially one for a great man of his teacher. Throughout the poem, the poem stresses that this great man preferred his funeral to be done that way, thus he preferred a simple funeral. Also, this tribute tells mourners that it is not that their family or the friends of the deceased are incapable or they couldn't have done an elaborate ceremony, but it is the wish of the departed that his funeral should be characterized by simplicity. As we said earlier, the funeral of this great man defies the typical sort of a funeral of a great person in Africa. In the African society, the funeral of a great person is characterized by a flamboyant ceremony or it is characterized by sophistication. People display wealth to show that the person is influential or the person is rich or the departed is a person of great standing in the society. Therefore, they want to organize a funeral that is befitting for the status of the person. But this is someone who wants his funeral to be characterized by simplicity. So, it is going to bring a lot of disagreement as people will not buy into that idea. Therefore, this tribute goes to tell the mourners that it is not that the family is not capable of doing such an elaborate ceremony that characterizes the funeral of a great person. No, the dearly departed has willed that he wants his funeral to be characterized by simplicity. The poet continues to inform readers and listeners that the disease preferred it that way. This is to inform us that they have not failed to properly honor this great man as most people will see it, but it is the wish of the man and they don't want to go against the last wish of a dead person. Hence, they had to comply. One interesting thing about this poem is that it heavily depends on the literal device apostrophe to convey its message. What then is an apostrophe? An apostrophe is a figure of speech in which we address an absent entity as if the person was present. The poem is like a conversation between the poet and the diseased on how society wanted his funeral to be performed as against how the diseased wanted his own funeral to be performed. In the poem, the speaker continuously refers to the dead person using you and your as if the dead person can actually hear and respond to his utterances. Let's now take a detailed analysis of the lines contained in the poem. Your funeral was so quiet and small, almost too small it is said for a man of your stature. Let's start our analysis from the title of the poem, A Reach of Tears. A reach is an arrangement of flowers, leaves and stems fastened in a ring and used for decoration or laying on the grave of a diseased person. It is an arrangement of flowers, leaves and stems fastened in a ring and used for decoration or for laying on the grave of a dead person. So, instead of the normal wreath we all know, which is made up of flowers such as rose, ivy, ferns and lilies, this particular wreath includes tears of the mourners and instead of laying it on the grave, they carry it in their hearts everywhere they go. Thus, their personal grief will outlast any celebration or their personal grief will outlast any ceremony that they will organize no matter how flamboyant or elaborate that particular ceremony is. The title of the poem, A Reach of Tears, immediately informs readers of what to encounter or what they will meet in the poem. This is a poem where we are going to encounter gloomy or sad images. This poem discusses the death of a prominent figure whose name remains unmentioned throughout the poem. So it is expected that 
Since the dead man, or the disease in question, is a prominent man in the society, then an elaborate and well-deserving funeral should be organized to ensure a smooth transition from the physical world to the spiritual world. But when we read the poem, we find out that that is not the case. As prominent as this dead person is, his funeral was characterized by simplicity and nothing beyond the ordinary. As the poet says, your funeral was so quiet and small, almost too small, it is said, for a man of your stature. You must have preferred it that way, having buried so many yourself, and knowing as you did, how private grief must be, how loss remains at the end personal. This stanza clearly informs readers that the simplicity that characterizes a funeral of this prominent man in question is something that the disease himself preferred or something that he wanted. Even though readers of the poem do not get a chance to see, meet, or hear from the dead person himself, we can all deduce from this stanza that this man of stature was a simple man. Hence, he preferred things to be done in a simple way. Thus, he was not at all sophisticated, as most people of stature in the African society are known for. Our poetic persona equally informs us that this great man or prominent man in the society has buried so many people himself. What it simply means is that the disease is either an old man who has witnessed the death of so many loved ones and truly knows what it means to lose a loved one. Hence, an extravagant or flamboyant funeral is not what is actually needed as this grand funeral cannot erase the pain in the hearts and minds of people. In the poet's own words, loss remains at the end personal. Or, the disease in question is a priest who has witnessed the burial of so many people which gives him an understanding of what mourning truly entails. Thus, mourning a person does not entail a flamboyant celebration. Or, to truly mourn a person, you don't need an elaborate funeral to do so. We would have sent flowers, but seeing how they had fallen carelessly into disrepute and not wanting to offend, we did not. In the third stanza, the poetic persona gladly informs us of how they would have given the disease a grand funeral befitting his teacher or greatness or a funeral befitting his nobility. However, they had to heed to the preferences or wants of the disease as he is a man of moderation or simplicity. The society wants to honor this great man with an elaborate funeral. However, not wanting to offend the dead man's will, they had to perform a small and simple funeral, almost too quiet for a person of his stature. Thus, we would have sent flowers. Flowers are a symbol of love. So, to show their love, they would have sent flowers. But, not wanting to offend, we did not. So, in order not to offend the dead person, or not to go against his wishes and commands, or not to go against his will, they decided not to organize a grand funeral, or they decided not to organize a flamboyant funeral. All this person needed was a funeral that is characterized by simplicity and moderation. Instead, from the garden of memory, suddenly blooming as with first rains, we plucked with care a rose here, an ivy there, ferns, lilies, chrysanthemums, and drop by tearful drop we wove, a reach from our personal loss. The fourth stanza emphasizes the sorrow of losing someone. This stanza is metaphoric in a sense that the words in this stanza should not be taken in their literal meaning. Here, the poetic persona clearly depicts the man's death as a great loss to the society. The memories of the diseased person is something that will go on forever. Inasmuch as the society was not allowed to organize a grand funeral which is characterized by roses, ivy, ferns, lilies, and chrysanthemums, 
they are able to weave for themselves all those precious things using their memories and tears which they wear around their necks. As we said earlier, arranges an arrangement of flowers, leaves and stems fastened in a ring and used for decoration of a laying on the grave of a dead person. So, instead of the normal wreath we all know, which is made up of flowers, such as rose, ivy, ferns, and lilies, this particular wreath includes the tears of the mourners, and instead of laying it on the grave, they carry it in their hearts everywhere they go. Thus, their personal grief or loss will outlast any celebration. So, instead, from the garden of memory, suddenly blooming us with first rain, we plucked with care, a rose here, an ivy there, ferns, lilies, chrysanthemums, and drop by tearful drops we wove, a rage from our personal laws. So you see, even though they were not allowed to send all these precious materials, in their minds, they are able to grow a garden in which they plug with care, a rose here, an ivy there, ferns, lilies, chrysanthemums, and to crown it all, this particular ridge includes their tears, which emphasizes the sorrow in this poem. Let's now move to the final stanza. We wear it around our hearts privately. It will outlast any tombstone, and you would have preferred it that way. This stanza concludes the poem by clearly portraying the power of the memories of this great man who has just passed away in the society. This is because he has left an indelible mark on the sands of time. So, instead of organizing a flamboyant or grand funeral ceremony, which will be the talk of town, the mourners are left with nothing to talk about but to hold on to the memories of this diseased person. Thus, when they organize an elaborate funeral, after the funeral, people are going to talk about the funeral rites and things that happen in the funeral and not the dead person himself. So, he depriving them of this has made them to wear their personal laws around their hearts privately and this, it is said, will outlast any tombstone. Thus, his absence will be greatly felt by the society. The grief of losing him will outlast any tombstone. This grief will outlast any flamboyant celebration. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video.